Hey guys, Bridget here. So I got a fun drinking game for this episode because I love and care about you guys and I feel like I haven't been drinking enough in my episodes. So we're gonna play a game which I like to call medium shot for shot. So every time you watch Night of the Living Dead, the 90s remake, every time there's a medium shot, you take a shot. So I am playing it with my best friend, Miss Franzia. Let's see how I do. I won, guys. I am the Franzia Queen. I'm Bridget Bardo, for all you know, your girl behind the counter. And we have resurrected something with the Necronomicon recently. Franchise versus franchises back, baby! We got better at editing, so we got new editing planned for this, and we figured we'd bring this back from the dead, as it were, and we're reviewing the remakes of Night of the Living Dead and The Evil Dead. So let's get started with some production history. No more chit-chat. Hey guys, Bridget here. So I am in the editing room, and one of the things that I found, which I kind of want to give a little bit of a clarification on, is the idea of Evil Dead as a horror comedy versus a straight horror series. So for this particular version, this particular remake of the Evil Dead, it's just a straight horror film. And a lot of people got mad because they're like, well, Evil Dead's obviously a horror comedy series. But one of the things that I found was really interesting in looking at an article from Boston.com is Bruce Campbell describing The Evil Dead as a horror franchise, saying that it doesn't have comedy aspects. And when I looked at his original quote, he says, in the first one, there aren't really comedy moments and that it's played just straight and serious. And I would completely agree. And I think the idea of tone that they were going for in this one is remaking the first Evil Dead, which was just a straight horror movie. Now, I think where they came into problems with that is the fact that the second one has talking animals on the walls in it, and it does go for more of a bonkers tone. And the third one takes place in a fucking medieval times. So I don't know if this was a studio decision, if they just wanted a straight horror movie and they felt, well, we can reboot it as a straight horror series, which would be an interesting concept. Or if it's just the idea that they wanted to take the tone of the first Evil Dead, which was just a straight horror movie. I'm just speculating here, but I'm not 100% sure. And I wanted to go and be perfectly clear about all this. Anyways, back to the show. Now let's start with the section which everyone skips over. Production history. Starting with Night of the Living Dead from 1990s, we have Tom Savini, makeup extraordinaire, in the director's chair for once. And we also have Romero and Russo, who are in the writer's seat once again. Now, the reason why they made this film is because they didn't want an unauthorized reboot going and wreaking havoc on the Night of the Living Dead universe. The Evil Dead remake from 2013 is by Fede Alvarez, and this is a straight redoing and straight reboot of the Evil Dead franchise, except with more of a straight horror vibe rather than a horror comedy vibe. So this time they've asked for Fede to make just a straight horror film. And how well he succeeds at it, we'll see. So, Starting with what the fuck Night of the Living Dead, the 1990s version was about. They're coming to get Barbara again. And of course she's running to a farmhouse where later on she meets Ben and they all realize that there are people in the basement called the Coopers and there's also a couple in there. And all of these people have to decide whether or not they are going to cooperate and outlast the zombie horde or tear themselves apart. No, the 2013 version of The Evil Dead features all new characters, David, Natalie, Mia, Eric, and Olivia, as Mia is trying to detox in her family cabin and her friends 
are here to help. Unfortunately, they've chosen the wrong cabin, and I'm not talking about a mold issue here. Unfortunately, this one's got a Necronomicon in it, and one of these waffles decided to read it. The horror, the absolute travesty of it all. In an Evil Dead movie, they would never. So unfortunately, all these people got a whole bunch of deadites overwhelming the premises. Anyways, let's talk some of the similarities between these two reboots. So, speaking on the similarities between these franchises, so the setups are either similar or near identical. In the case of Night of the Living Dead, it's near identical setup to the original. I mean, you have the same writers. But in The Evil Dead, it's a lot more subtle, and there's updates in there to make this work for a much more savvy 2010s audience. And a lot more stakes are heightened. But the funny thing about both of these is that they managed to have completely different endings to the original that they are copying. Now, in looking at the set pieces, the funny thing is Night of the Living Dead keeps a lot of the set pieces from the original and keeps them in the same order. And the Evil Dead remake does the same thing, except they kept it all in the same order, just with very different context. And also with a little bit of the Evil Dead 2 added in for some like extra fanboy spice. You can obviously tell that Fede Alvarez is a huge fan of this series because we've got callbacks for like all of the movies in there, including some of my least favorite actually elements from the first one. Here's looking at you, tree scene. I wish we got rid of that. And also, one of my favorite callbacks, which is to the chainsaw scene in Evil Dead 2 with the ash hand. And you'll see when you watch the movie, it's hilarious. Now, in looking at the special effects, of course, both of them have greatly improved effects. I mean, with Night of the Living Dead, uh, no fucking shit, it's Tom Savini. So all of the zombies, you now know what they were doing when they died, how they died, and what state of decay they are in, which is a real improvement actually from Night of the Living Dead 3, where you had a much greater advancement in the zombies. So they're really carrying from that. And with the Evil Dead, you've got a more updated version of the Deadites, which are in the same vein and kind of feel the same, but they're more updated for a 2010s audience. Now, where these similarities end is in terms of acting performances. Now, don't get me wrong, both, all, both of these sets of actors really struggle in terms of the material they're given, but they both struggle in very different ways. Starting with how these films differ, I would like to say it's a damn challenge to go and redo anyone else's iconic role. And with Dwayne Jones and Bruce Campbell, you got an uphill battle, baby. So let's start with Night of the Living Dead. Tony Todd and Patricia Tallman are struggling here, and it's not their fault. It's pretty obvious that Tom Savini is uncomfortable in the director's chair because as much as he's really good at shooting action scenes when it comes to the dialogue, he doesn't really know what to do and it kind of looks like a TV commercial and he really hasn't updated it at all visually either. So where this comes in with Tony and Patricia is the fact that when they're not speaking, it seems like they don't know what to do or what their character's motivations are. <laughs> Which is a problem because most of Night of the Living Dead is a uh, dialogue scene. Now, in The Evil Dead, we got the opposite problem, which is Fede Alvarez has way too much personality for this. Oh my goodness, way too much personality. And it's not bad either. I would say that Alvarez is king of the jump scares. Like, it's hard to get a jump scare right, and he managed to get me at least twice. 
The man also knows how to make a shot beautiful and a color palette just shine. But the big problem is Shiloh Fernandez is struggling to make this role his own because Bruce Campbell exists. And that's not Shiloh Fernandez's fault, but it's really the fault of the script. In looking at the script, they were trying to make a straight horror movie. Now the problem with The Evil Dead is it's a horror comedy and it honestly needs to stay that way. In looking at this remake, I didn't really see The Evil Dead in it. I just saw a pretty good 2010s horror movie, but that just wasn't The Evil Dead. Which was a real shame because do you want to know who is the script doctor for this script? Why, Diablo Cody of Jennifer's Body Fame and Juno, Miss Queen of the One Liner. And you can see her work in this. So, really, I think the dream team to make this happen would have been Fede as a director, but Diablo as the writer. And I just don't know why they didn't let that happen. Now, looking at Night of the Living Dead, the big problem with the script is that it just doesn't add anything to it. Like, it doesn't really update it to the 90s. It just feels like the same story. The major update that they did to it was with Barbara's character, but even then, it feels like she's a weird ripoff of, like, Vasquez and Ripley from Aliens, straight down to the costumes. And it doesn't really add anything to the ending or really to the whole film. Just kind of feels like a strange change. And in addition, while they have decided to give her more lines, they have neglected to give her a bra. And I will just, I will leave that there just for everyone to sit in. Anyways, let's talk about how these series really rack up as a whole. So, in terms of how both of these films advance their respective series, I would say not that much, which is unfortunate because, look, a reboot could have been done for both of these that really expanded and that really modernized both of these films for this particular age. Problem with these is that they don't really do much of anything. Now, in looking at their individual scores, I am going to give The Evil Dead three Deadites out of five, because I do like Bebe Alvarez, I don't think it's the worst movie in the world, and it's quite enjoyable for what it is. Now, for Night of the Living Dead, I'm gonna give this 2.5 zombies out of five, because George A. Romero, was the writer of this script and managed not to go and update his own script. So I'm gonna have to give negative points for that one. Anyways, I am Bridget Bardo. For all you know, your girl behind the counter. Like, comment, and subscribe for movies you don't give a shit about. And of course, make sure to follow me at official girl behind the counter on Instagram, and of course, follow me on Letterboxd at Bardot for all you know. And I will see you in the next one, Counter Crew.